Praise the Lord. Gloire à Dieu. Everybody, I said, praise the Lord. Tout le monde, je dis gloire à Dieu. The Lord has been good to us. The Lord has been good to you. And tonight, the final night, tonight, the grand finale. The Lord is going to visit everybody in a miraculous way in Jesus' name. Everything he has done from the first day until today and now both here and all over in every country every community everyone connected everywhere here at the Alpha location over the radio over the television online or social media the Lord is going to glorify himself in every life. The same Jesus, the Savior, the Lord, the Deliverer, the Healer, the one that brings all miracles into every life. The same Jesus, the Prince of Peace, that has all power everywhere, every time, in every generation, and we're still there. It's going to work miraculously, abundantly, supernaturally, even tonight in Jesus' name. Your expectation will not be disappointed. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We bless you and glorify your name. What a great God you are. A good God you are. A gracious God you are. And you remain ever the same. The same God, I am God, I change not. The same Christ, the same Christ, what he did yesterday, today, he does forever. We're asking, Lord, that you manifest yourself in an unprecedented manner, even tonight in Jesus' name. Everyone hearing, everyone listening, everyone believing, everyone receiving, that today all the needs of your people will be met. We well, thank you for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Another amen. amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we're talking about Jesus. We're talking about that same Jesus. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The one that overcame before overcomes today and overcomes forever. A conqueror. Yesterday, today, and forever. The triumphant king yesterday, today, and forever. The one that is mighty to save yesterday, today, and forever. The Lord of all grace. The Lord of goodness. And the Lord of glory. And the Lord that proves himself strong every time. Tonight we are looking at the perpetual triumph of the prince and all his people. He said, because I overcame, you'll overcome. Because I am triumphant, you'll be triumphant. Because I conquer, you will conquer. 
perpetually before today and forever the perpetual triumph of the prince and of all his people we're reading from Daniel chapter 7 chapter 7 verse 13 I saw in the night vision and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days that said God the father and they brought him the Christ the same yesterday and today and forever and they brought him the conqueror of death and disease and they brought him the savior of the lord and the prince they brought him near before him before god the ancient of days and then in verse 14 he says and there was given unto him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, all nations, and all languages should, say, should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. He's giving us the introduction of Christ once again that he has dominion he has kingdom he has power he has authority he is the conqueror and the overcomer of every challenge of life both now and forevermore and you are invited to come to him so that everything in your life you didn't have dominion on he will have the dominion. I said he will have the dominion. Everything that had overpowered you, everything that had overcome you, everything that pressed you down, almost pressing you out of life, and pressing life out of you, that this Jesus, the king having a kingdom, the sovereign having a dominion, that when he comes into your life, he brings his power, he brings his royalty, he brings his sovereignty, he brings his dominion over into your life. And as you reconcile with God through him, as you reunite with God through him, then he has that dominion, that authority, that power forever, which shall not pass away. That everything he has done for you in, the, in this uh, crusade, it will continue. Your miracle will not have an end. Your victory will not have an end. Your triumph will not have an end. The perpetual triumph of the prince and of all his people. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, and the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. He got the dominion for you. He got the power for you. He got the peace for you. And he says the dominion, the power, the authority, the kingdom shall be given unto the people of the saints. The saints of the Most High. 
whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. There's no doubt in your heart now that this Jesus overcomes and overthrows everything negative in your life. And it's giving you that dominion that you will also have dominion and authority and power. Anything you say no to in your life, it's gone. Anything you say welcome in your life has come. The same dominion and power that Jesus, the Savior, the Lord has, that same dominion and power he gives to his people and you are victorious in every area of life in Jesus name look at 1st John chapter 4 verse 17 1st John chapter 4 verse 17 herein is our love made perfect Love is life, life is love. Herein is our life made perfect. Because of the new life he gives us, he gives us a new love. Herein is our love, is a life made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Listen to this, listen to this, because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is victorious, so are we victorious in this world. Not only in the days of the GCK, but when we're finished tonight, and then you go out, everywhere you go, every house you enter, every village you get to, every community you get to, I see a so are we in this world. <laughs> Sin does not have authority over him anymore. And as he is, so are we in this world. When you think of yourself, when you think of your unity and your union with Christ, when you think of your reconciliation with the Lord, and when you think that you are a member of Christ, that I see a so are we in this world. He is triumphant, you are triumphant. He is an overcomer, you are an overcomer. He is the conqueror. And you are the conqueror too. I see it, so am I in this world. Say it for yourself. I see it, so I am in this world. Your victory will be permanent in Jesus' name. The perpetual triumph of the prince and all his people. We're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the final triumph of the preeminent prince of peace. He is the prince of peace. And he is preeminent. Because the preeminent prince of peace he has triumph. Final, final, final triumph. That the devil cannot come back, the flesh cannot come back, the world cannot come back and bring him down again. He has the final, the full, the triumph 
of that preeminent Prince of Peace. Number two, our full transformation through the perfect propitiation of the Prince. His sacrifice was perfect. The propitiation was perfect. The provision of the cross was perfect. And everything he has provided by his blood, by his death, everything he has done, perfect, complete, and full. Our full transformation through the perfect propitiation of the Prince. Number three is a future translation. The future translation of the peacefully pure by the Prince. We're not going to remain here forever. The Lord is going to come back again. He's going to take us to himself. By the resurrection, by the rapture. And he says to those of us who are alive. When he comes, he'll catch us away. He will translate us from our earthly home, earthly address, to the heavenly home, heavenly address. That will, that will happen anytime. The rapture, the resurrection. That will happen anytime from now. The resurrection of the dead in Christ and the catching up and transferring them to heaven above. The future translation of the peacefully pure by the prince. Let's take them one by one. Number one is the final triumph of the preeminent Prince of Peace. We have read it before. We need to read this every day. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. That's his name. He has the name and the nature of peace. He is the Prince of Peace. Anywhere there's confusion, it's not there. Anywhere there's strife, it's not there. Anywhere there's violence, it's not there. Anywhere there is a destruction, destabilization of life, it's not there. When it comes in any situation, in any family, in any life, he brings peace because he's the Prince of Peace. And then in verse 7, in verse 7 it says, And of the increase of his kingdom and of his peace, there shall be no end. When he died on the cross, when he was buried, when he rose again, the peace he brought did not end. When he showed himself to his disciple 40 days with many infallible proofs. And then he was caught up to get to heaven. The peace he brought did not stop. From century to century, generation to generation, from one place to the other, until now, it says, and the peace shall have no end. Generation, generation, 
that peace is still for you today. It'll bring peace in your heart, peace in your life, peace in your soul, peace in your family, peace in our country, Cameroon. And peace in all the nations of the world. Because the peace he has brought shall have no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with just, justice and with judgment from henceforth even forever. And then it says, and the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. They will perform it in your life. Everything he died to provide at Calvary, he will provide and perform in your life. Actually, he has the key. He has the key, the clay. He has the key to open the treasure house of heaven. He has the key to open every place the goodness of God is in heaven. And he uses that key and blessings come upon your life. Yeah, the key to open all the treasure house of the enemy that he locks there and he wants to bring that evil out. Jesus has the key, he opens that place and burns off everything in that place. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 22. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder. So he shall open and none shall shut. And he shall shut and none shall open. He has the master key that opens every door. The door of your of your imprisonment, he has the key, he'll open that door, you'll come out today. The door of captivity, the door of disease, the door of sin, the door of impotence. He has the key for you tonight. Where are you? For you tonight, he will use that master key and he will open the door. You'll come out of darkness. Matthew chapter 16. In Matthew chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 19. It says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That's Jesus Christ. He was telling Peter and the rest of the apostles. But remember, it is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the key that he gave unto those apostles is still the same. He gives us the key. Every door that is uh, locked against you, he gives you the key. Can you hear your amen? Yeah. You know the key to progress, the key to freedom, the key to joy, the key to peace, the key to provision. The key to open the door where the solution to your problem is, it says, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. (laughs) 
And then he says, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Thou shalt bind. Amen. You know some people, they wait there. You have the key to the car in your, in your pocket. And you stand before that door. And you are praying. And you are crying. There are times we stop praying and we start acting. The children of Israel were before the Red Sea. Moses was praying. Moses, there are times we stop praying, we start acting. God said, Moses, why are you crying and praying and shouting? The key is in your hand to open a path in that red sea. Stretch it out. And the sea will open. The key has come to your hand. He said, I will give unto them the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on the earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Why do Christians throw the key away? Why do Christians go to a prophet somewhere, a great man somewhere, to open their little door for them when the key is in your hand? Why do we suffer for such a long time? I was saying, here yeah, I am, I'm suffering. Let somebody come and buy this thing for me and lose this thing for me. Jesus said, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Since he defeated Satan at the cross, he has given us the key. Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also our king, he also our prince, he also our savior, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, the death at Calvary, he might destroy him that arch the power of death, that is the devil. He died for us on the cross to paralyze the devil. That evil fellow does not have power over you anymore. When you know that you know, when you know the truth, the truth that says the devil is impotent, powerless, paralyzed, even put to death, he will not have any active power over you anymore in Jesus' name. Look at verse 15 there. Verse 15, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. I am delivered. That's not a story. I am delivered. 
that's not even an expectation. It's reality. I am delivered. From any power moderated, orchestrated by the devil, you are delivered in Jesus' name. In First John chapter 3, verse 22, he says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Anytime we go to the Lord and we ask, we always receive. It doesn't say, ah, you came yesterday, are you coming today again? I healed you yesterday, what do you want again today? I provided for you yesterday, what do you want again today? Every time we come, we're asking for ourselves, we're asking for our wife, we're asking for our husband, we're asking for our children, we're asking for our parents. We have a request. This will give me joy if I have it. Okay, come and ask. And whatsoever you ask, you receive of him. Because we keep his commandments, therefore he keeps our request. And we do those things that are pleasing, pleasant in his sight. And in verse 23, it says, and this is his commandment. That we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. And love one another. Why? Why? Love one another is connected with receiving our request from Him. Why? Look at that man. I hate this fellow. And I want him to die before his time. Now, God gave words. The word will speak is a gift. He will not use the gift he gave you to destroy his creatures. So, if you hate any creature of God, and you go to take the back of a tree, the leaf of a tree, the branch of a tree, and you squeeze them together, and you say, I'm going to use this concoction to kill that man. God will not assist you. Because he created the back of the tree, the branches, and the leaves. He created that not for you to kill his own children. Everything God created, He created for us to use. But to use in love. And so, because we love Him, we keep His commandments. And everything we ask, He will give unto us. Revelation chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 7. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These things is he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key. What he told us at the beginning is telling us at the end of the Bible. He has the key. He that openeth and no man shutteth. He that shutteth and no man openeth. 
Christ as the key to your blessing tonight. The key to all the provision of life for you tonight. Everything you're asking. No problem too big. No challenge too great. No sickness so painful. No disease so long standing. He has the key. The key to your salvation. The key to your healing. The key to your deliverance. He has the key. Tonight, he will use that key. It will open the door of salvation for you. He'll say, come in. The key of victory and triumph for you. He'll say, come in. And you come coming to the blessing of the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. Now, the key is not only for newcomers. It's not only for sinners who are to be saved. The key is for you, the believer. He'll open the door of holiness and the door of sanctification. He'll say, come in. You are purified, you are washed, you are cleansed. There's still something that the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody says, I've been praying for a long time. I fasted too. I want to have the power of the Holy Ghost. Christ has the key to the door of power. I'm just ask him. <laughs> Not that will cry, roll on the ground. Just ask him. He will use that key and open the door of power to you tonight. And remember, whatever he gives you, it shall have no end. You go on and on in the peace of God. On and on in the sanctification, holiness of God. On and on in the power, baptism, immersion in the Holy Ghost. On and on for every blessing you desire. The final triumph of the preeminent Prince of Peace. We're coming to number two here. In the full transformation through the perfect propitiation of the prince. The propitiation is the sacrifice that he shed his blood, and that blood became effective to forgive, to set free, to, to break the power of sin away from your life. It's a perfect propitiation. In the Old Testament, they used to give a sacrifice. They bring an animal. They collect the blood. They put the blood on the lintels of their houses. Or they put the blood on the altar. They add what they call the day of atonement in the year. Every day, that particular day of every year, they have to repeat that. The sacrifice of previous year will not be sufficient. The sacrifice in the previous day of atonement was not sufficient. They have to do it year after year after year. But when Christ came, he gave a perfect propitiation. He doesn't have to do it every year, every year, every year. Once he did it, final. 
it is that simple position. It is that provision of salvation. It is once and once for all that gives us pardon today and gives us salvation today and give us freedom from sin today and gives us power to overcome all temptation, all trial that comes today. In Romans chapter 3 verse 23, it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then in verse 24, it says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. The sacrifice of that day when he died on the cross of Calvary. When he shed his blood for you, for me, for the whole world. God set him to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. <clears throat> and that propitiation is still effective until today. His peace shall have no end. His pardon shall have no end. His provision shall have no end. And the effectiveness of his sacrifice shall have no end. That's why you must not sacrifice another animal today, or any other thing today, when you are asking for salvation, asking for redemption, asking for the blessing from Calvary. Any animal sacrifice today is an insult to Christ. You are saying what he did was not complete, was not sufficient, and now you have to bring another sacrifice. You are saying what he did that time was not final, was not perfect, but it is final. It is perfect. No other sacrifice, no other shedding of blood. Today, Christ has given us a perfect propitiation. Look at first John chapter two, verse two. John chapter two, first John chapter two, verse two. And he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord had made a sacrifice, you know, much time before he wrote this, many years before he wrote this. And still, after many years, the Holy Spirit still writes through John. He, our Christ, He, the same Christ, He, the same Savior, is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world first john chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 8. in first john chapter 3 verse 8 and he he that committed sin is of the devil because sin is the product of the action, the inspiration, the influence of the devil in any man's life. For the devil sinned from the beginning. 
for this purpose the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil he was manifested why to destroy the works of the devil and when he went to the cross he said it is finished he had destroyed the works of the devil the effect of what he did at that time shall have no end it is still effective today any work of the devil in your life tonight destroyed first john chapter 5 verse 18 First John chapter 5 verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Before you were born again, there was something like a spiritual magnet inside you. And that spiritual magnet, anywhere there is sin, picks it up. <clears throat> Attracts sin into your life. Because you are not born again. And because the spiritual magnet was there. And then you become born again. You are pardoned. You are set free. Your life is turned around. And Christ comes in. And he finds the magnet there. He removes that magnet in your heart, in your soul, in your inner being, in your inner man. He throws the magnet away. He now sits on the throne of your heart. He lives inside your heart. And Jesus in your heart does not attract sin. He repels sin. The Savior in your heart. The Lord, the King in your heart. Is not the magnet that attracts sin into your life. He repels sin away from your life. If you're born again, that's your experience. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and the wicked one toucheth him not. The wicked one will not touch you again. You are free. And the liberator that sets you free lives on the inside of you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even by the Spirit of the Lord. We all whether we're in Cameroon or Nigeria or Ghana or Congo, Brazzaville, we all, all those who are born again. With open face, the veil has been taken away from our face. The darkness has been taken away from our face. The misinterpretation of the word of God has been taken away from our face. 
the veil of tradition, traditional religion, have been taken away from my face. And we who are born again, we who are transformed, we who have tasted of the sacrifice of Christ, we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. In John chapter 8 verse 32. John chapter 8 verse 32. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He was talking to the people who had not known the truth and he said ye shall in the future know the truth. But then he told his own disciples, he said, the comforter, the spirit of truth will come. That spirit has now come. And the spirit has given the revelation to the apostles. They have written for us Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They have written Acts and Romans and Corinthians. They've given us now Galatians, and they've given us uh, Thessalonians, Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, Hebrews. They've given us the truth now. It's giving us apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. It's giving us the people that expound the word and they teach the word in its fullness. It's giving us now. We have heard it over and over now, therefore, we have known the truth. It's no more that we are waiting to know the truth. To the people he spoke to at that time, they were waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. They were waiting for the spirit of truth. They were waiting for the full revelation of the truth. But now we have got it. Ye have known the truth, and that truth will make you free. Look at verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You are free. The Son of God has come to you. He has come as Savior. He has come as your Redeemer. He has come with the key. And he opens the door for you. And since the Son has made you free, you're free indeed. Free from sin. Free from lying. Free from deception. Free from Satan. Free from sickness. The Son of God has come. When he was on earth, everyone that came to him was set free. And now he has come to you tonight. And you are free tonight in Jesus' name. We'll come to point number three now. In the future translation of the peacefully pure by the prince. The day is soon approaching when Christ will come. He told us the truth. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you unto myself. 
it's a change of address when you hear that a believer a real child of god has died he only changed his residence and when somebody from Cameroon here, when he is uh, translated and he goes to France or he goes to Germany to live there, he's still alive. And he only change address from Cameroon to France or Cameroon to, uh, to, to Germany. Change of address. And when somebody is transferred like that, translated like that, into that new address, we don't cry and cry as people with no hope. And when somebody changes address from earthly address to heavenly address, we don't cry forever and ever. Actually, our cry is selfish. Our cry is selfish. Because the fellow who has gone from this address on earth and has gone to that address in heaven is happy, is joyful. He said, this is the place I want to be forever. And we're crying, come back, come back. He said, never. I've come to a heavenly address. And so Christ is coming again. When he comes again, he'll take us from earth, he'll take us to heaven. But only those who are peacefully pure. That's why it says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man, even a preacher, no man, even a prophet, no man, even a high priest, no man, a man, no man of any church, any denomination, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. The future translation of the peacefully pure by the prince. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. And then in verse 6, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. We must have faith in Christ as Savior and Lord. You must surrender your heart, your life unto him by faith. You must have the evidence of a change of life that the life you surrender to Christ, he has received, he has transformed, he has purged, he has cleansed. Before his translation, he had this testimony, he pleased God. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We don't superficially seek him. We don't half-heartedly seek him. His God is worthy of our diligence in seeking him. Look at Second Kings chapter 2. Translation. Those who have been taken from earth to heaven without seeing death. 
we're looking at second king chapter 2 verse 5 and the sons of the prophets that were at jericho came to elisha and said unto him knowest thou that the lord will take away will translate thy master elijah from thy head today and he answered yea i know it there's going to be a translation and i know But remember, Elijah was not in physical combat with anybody. There are pastors, there are preachers, there are prophets that have slapped their wife. Fighting at home. There are pastors that will slap a member of the church. What did you say that? You say that to me, I am the pastor. You know, if we're going to get to heaven, if we're going to be translated in the rapture, we must be peacefully pure. There are preachers and pastors and Christian workers, so called. They get so if you say that again, I'll give you a dirty slap. But Elijah was not in conflict with anybody, he was peaceful, he was pure. There was no lady in the congregation while Elijah will be preaching that to say don't mind him I know what we'll do together when you people are not here to be translated to heaven and to be resurrected after you have died and then you'll go to heaven there must be peace in your heart. There must be purity in your heart. And it is when we are peacefully pure that that rapture, when it takes place, will be partakers. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, and it came to pass as they still went on and talked. They were not arguing. There's no argument between uh, um, an Elijah of today and Elisha of today. The people that say, I'm kind of uh, coaching you, I am training you, you are my apprentice in the ministry, and then argument and argument and fighting and anger. Nothing like that between Elijah and Elisha. If we go going to be translated when Christ comes all that has been taken away from our lives that behold there appear the chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them because one is to be on earth, the other one is going to heaven, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a wild wind into heaven. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. In Acts chapter 1, verse 9. And when he, Christ, had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of sight. In verse 10, it says, And while they looked up steadfastly toward heaven, that's where he went, as he went up, behold, two men, actually two angels appearing like men, stood by them in white apparel. In verse 11, 
which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. He had this translation into heaven. Now it's your turn. I said, now it's your turn. It's going to translate the believers who are peaceful and pure. It's going to translate them to heaven one of these days. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, reading from verse 15. For this will say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not proceed, prevent them which are asleep, those who have died. In verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those who died in Christ. If any man be in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, it's a new creature. Those who died as real converted believers. They were in Christ, they were new creatures. They were not smoking and drinking in secret before they died. They were not committing adultery fornication before they died. They didn't die with the guilt of sin before they were buried. The people who have the peace of God in their hearts, that there was no sin, there was no condemnation, and it's not, there's not something they were hiding. No, I will not talk about that. I'll not make restitution. I'll not make my life right. If I make my life right, I will be ashamed. They died with the guilt and the condemnation. It's not talking about them here. This is not the time for their resurrection because they will not be translated into heaven. He said, those who died in Christ, they rise first. And then in verse 17, he said, then we which are alive, alive unto righteousness, alive in Christ, alive unto God and remain, shall be caught up together like Enoch, caught up together like, like Elijah, caught up together like Christ that went up after his resurrection. In the ascension, we shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever, forever, be with the Lord in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. This one has happened here. He delivered us from sin, from sickness, from Satan who has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has broken the power of the devil from your life. And 
he has translated us we were in the kingdom of the darkness of sin in the darkness of the kingdom of satan in the darkness of the kingdom of sickness and we pray to the lord lord i need your salvation i need your healing i need your deliverance and that same jesus he came and delivered us tonight is your night he will take you away from that sin and take that sin away from you he'll take you away from that sickness he'll take the satanic torment away from your life who has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son and then in verse 14 in whom we have we have it already in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins I pray everything the Lord has provided at Calvary will be for you. Yeah. And after tonight, we'll go to our various places. He may come today. He may come tomorrow. Morning or noon or night. You are in that town, you are in that village, you are in that place. I am in, in my country or maybe another country ministering. When the rapture shall take place, the Lord will pick us up from everywhere. He'll take us home together. Please understand, the crusade is not for joke, it's not for play. The crusade is to invite you into the kingdom and to abide in the kingdom so that when you will come, anywhere you are in the world, he'll take us all together home. The crusade is not for fun fair. It's not for celebration. It's to bring us into the kingdom of his dear son so that when he will come, when Christ will come, anywhere you are, he will translate you to heaven. John chapter 14 verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In verse 2, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And he comes to prepare you for that place. You confess your sin. You forsake your sin. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He enters into your life. He makes a transformation in your life. And you live for him peacefully and purely. Every day of your life, resisting temptation, standing right, not compromising with the people of the flesh, but living a pure life, a peaceful life. And then he tells us in verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. He will translate us to where he is in heaven. That where I am there, you may be also. 
That's why I want to say thank you, Jesus. We want to welcome Jesus to our hearts. We want a salvation. We want his peace. We want his purity. We want his power to strengthen us so we keep on living in peace, in purity, in power until he comes to take us, to translate us to heaven. If your heart is empty of Christ the Savior, when he comes again and the saints are marching in, he will leave you here to suffer during the great tribulation under the Antichrist. But if you say, Come in, Lord Jesus, come in today into my heart and stay there, abide there. Grant me pardon. Grant me peace. Grant me purity. Grant me the power to live victoriously for you. When it comes, heaven, you will go. Where are you? It's about a nice closed. Tonight, you must have this Savior in your heart, in your life. And the peace of God must settle in your heart. Purity must replace impurity in your heart. If you are giving your heart, you are opening the door of your heart to Jesus, your Savior. Now, wherever you are, you can raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. You want Jesus in your heart. His peace in your heart. His pardon in your heart. His new life in your life. Raise up that hand. Over the radio, the television, online, everywhere you are, raise up your hand now. And seriously, commit yourself to the Lord. If you're raising up your hand, please stand up for Christ. If you're raising up your hand, please stand up for Christ. I want his pardon. I want his peace. I want the new life he brings. Rise up there. And pray and tell the Lord. Lord, I surrender myself completely unto you. All my secret sins and all my open sin and all my shameful sin. I confess unto you. Give me forgiveness and give me your grace. I will not continue in them anymore. The Lord is hearing you. Talk to the Lord. The Lord is listening to you. Talk to the Lord. Take away the burden of my sin. Take away the guilt and the condemnation of my sin. Fully, without any reservation, I commit myself unto you. I believe. I believe. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, I believe. Let me pray with you now. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name for the word of invitation into the kingdom of your dear son. All these have responded to the invitation. Both here and online and everywhere. According to your promise which will not fail. 
forgive their sins in Jesus name take away the guilt and the condemnation of sin away from them give them forgiveness and total freedom grant them the joy of salvation change their violent lives to a peaceful life change the impure life to a pure life let them live by your grace to the glory of your name thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray keep on standing our counselors will come to you there they'll give you the sleep to feel we do that with all seriousness of mind no more lying no more deception we're not truthful peaceful pure people our moderating overseer will take over now You are welcome to the kingdom of the Prince of Peace. What a wonderful day. That you have chosen the Lord as your Savior. You have made a good decision. You have found the counselors in your midst. You find our counselors in your midst. S'il vous plaît, vous allez répondre à des questions posées sur un bout de papier qui vous sera remis. Please, you are going to respond to the questions that are there on the, the forms they'll give you. Veuillez fournir les informations demandées sur cette fiche. Please provide the information you have been asked on those forms. Et, et vous précisez le quartier de votre résidence. Precise the address of and the quarter where le you reside. Le numéro de votre téléphone. Your telephone contact. Et le numéro de votre WhatsApp. And your WhatsApp number. Nous vous prions de bien vouloir écrire-les en détail, lisiblement. Please, may you write them in capital letters. Et de préférence en lettres majuscules. In capital letters. Cela va nous permettre de vous suivre dans votre... Uh, dans votre nouvelle vocation. Will permit us to follow you in this your new calling. S'il vous plaît, écrivez-les, écrivez-les uh, assez rapidement. Please write them properly and rapidly. Pour nos amis uh, qui nous suivent sur les réseaux sociaux. Those who are following on the social media. Vous allez voir le lien. You see the link. Qui faufile, qui faufile sur l'écran en bas the link below the screen jck jck hq point org dot org cliquez le lien click on that link et répondez aux questions que vous posez and respond to the questions you find pour nos amis qui nous suivent à la radio for our friends who are following online on et the radio et à la télévision and the television faites nous parvenir des informations que sur notre numéro de WhatsApp. So please you provide us information through our WhatsApp number. Plus 234 plus 234 915 915 444 444 92 63 92 63 Nous voulons savoir si nous avons assez rempli les fiches à ma droite. Want to know if those forms have been filled on our right hand side. Si c'est fait, if it's done, indiquez par uh, agiter le drapeau que vous tenez. Please, can you do that by lifting up the flags you have? La même chose 
au centre. The same thing here in the center. Ainsi que à ma, à ma gauche. As well as on our left hand side. Les conseillers. Counselors. Aider ceux qui ne, qui ne peuvent pas écrire. Help those who are unable to write. Parce que c'est un moment indispensable It's an indispensable pour moment. vivre en éternité. Though it take us to eternity. C'est un jour heureux. It's a happy day. Quel beau jour What a que vous avez day. choisi le Seigneur you have comme sauveur. Choosing the Lord as your savior. Et c'est ce jour qui débute And votre invitation en permanence. This day is the beginning of your permanent invitation. Pour élire domicile avec le Créateur dans le ciel. For a new residence with a Creator in heaven. S'il vous plaît, faisons cela rapidement. Please may do that rapidly. Et je reprends les conseillers se trouvant à ma droite. Si vous avez fini, agitez le drapeau. I take it over again. Our counselors on the right hand side. If you are done, please may indicate by lifting Au up centre, si vous avez fini, que agitez le drapeau. The same thing on the center. If you are done, may you lift up your flag. Et à ma gauche, pareillement. As well as on the right hand side. Nous vous attendons. We are waiting on you. Faisons ça rapidement, s'il vous plaît. Nous vous attendons. Please, may we do that rapidly. We are waiting on you. Oui, je peux voir au centre. I Merci. I can see it raised up on the center. Thank you. Mère, à ma droite. On my right hand side. À l'extrême droite. The extreme right. Est-ce que nous pouvons voir le drapeau agité Is the flag raised up there? Oui, derrière. Yes, behind. Que Dieu vous bénisse. God bless you. À, à ma droite, à ma gauche. On my left hand side. Est-ce que nous avons fini? Are we done over there? Oui. Yes. Gloire à Dieu. Praise the Lord. Je n'ai rien écouté. Gloire à Dieu. I didn't hear you. Praise the Lord. Notre Père dans le Seigneur est prêt. Our Father in the Lord is ready. De venir remettre la clé passe partout. Give you the key for everywhere. De remettre la clé passe partout. Give you the overall key. Aujourd'hui, vous ne manquerez today. la vôtre. Praise the Lord. Gloire à Dieu. Si vous êtes là, gloire à Dieu. If you are there, praise the Lord. Tonight. Ce soir. All the remnants of the problem of the devil, everything will be swept away. Every pain in your life. Every problem in your life. Every sickness in your body. Every impossibility in your life and family, everything is going to be possible tonight. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe, all that Satan has deposited here, there and there, and knock off his son from your body. Tonight you have a testimony. Amen. Amen. Search for that thing if it's still there. Lay your hand there. And raise up the other hand. That power that cannot fail will drive them away. We're ready to pray now. At the final, amen, you do what you were not able to do before. Father, in Jesus' name, you are a mighty God, a wonder-working God, a powerful God. 
the creator of the heavens and the earth with whom nothing shall be impossible Lord Jesus will come through your name the name above every name the name above the name of cancer above ulcer above tuberculosis above insanity above swelling above prostrate above anything on earth that troubles anyone we come in that all-powerful almighty name and we're asking that you answer the prayer of everyone right now in Jesus' name. Long-standing sickness, long-standing disease. The key has been given. And I command, I bind, I bind. And I command you, come out in Jesus' name. All manner of sickness, all manner of disease, be healed right now in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, those dim eyes, be open and see clearly in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb, be healed in Jesus' name. Stroke, arthritis, paralysis, you are healed in Jesus' name. Internal sickness, internal disease, you feel tired, you feel worn out. It's like you're going to collapse. Let strength come to you now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Every work of the devil in your body be totally removed and be totally cast out in Jesus' name. Now, testimony everywhere. On the right, on the left, at the back, at the center, everywhere all over this field. Over the radio, over the television, in every nation, in every country. Lord, touch everyone, heal them, deliver them, set them free, work out miracle in every life. Incurable diseases be healed right now in Jesus' name. Confirm your miracle in every life. Healing in every life. Deliverance in every life. Put testimony in every mouth at this final amen. Thank you, Lord. We know it is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. Check up yourself. The miracle is already there. Uh, is that all?